Now, as we progress in this course, we'll be writing quite a bit of our code, uh, bigger chunks than you have done so far. Till now, you've been executing probably individual R commands and seeing the results. Now, we'll start writing R code and commands, which are actually quite, quite long, broken across multiple lines. And therefore, it's a good idea at this point to focus our attention on how to format our code so that it's more easily readable and understandable not only for yourself but for others. In fact, most importantly what happens is quite often we write some code just for the moment getting something done and later on we may have to revisit the code and then we go and look at it and we find it really hard to understand what was going on at that point in time. Now when we are writing code many times we make the mistake of assuming well the job is done I don't need this code anymore. In reality whatever code you write if it's even semi-serious you're going to have to revisit it many times so it's a good idea to write it in such a way that when you do revisit the code everything is clear you're able to understand it and of course when you're working in a team you write some code and you want somebody else to be able to look at your code and understand it then also it becomes really important to format code in a way that makes it easy to read okay so uh, let's take this line of code here right so I'm here I'm just of course this is very simple I'm just creating a vector of strings and this is you know within our studio within the editor I've got this line and clearly you can see that the line is bigger than than my window itself so if I look at it I don't even see the entire line of code which is not a great thing so I want to break up this line of code into multiple lines okay so this is a problem that the line itself is too long to be able to uh, for us to be able to understand it, comprehend it and grasp it. Of course this line is relatively simple because all we are doing is creating a vector so there isn't much complexity but I'm using this as an example. Okay, So one thing I can do is to break it up into two lines like this. right? So after Pedro I put a, a, a new line and I got these two elements sitting here. Okay. Now, in this particular example, it's fairly straightforward. You can read it and understand what's going on. Uh, but it's always a good idea to line up arguments. Okay. This is a simple-minded solution. It may work for small things, but it doesn't work in the general case. It doesn't help very much. It's a better idea to break up the code like this. So what I've done is, after Mason, I've moved the remaining code into a new line. And again, after Pedro, I've moved the remaining code to the new line. The most important thing to observe here is that all the arguments to the vector to the function C are lined up. Okay, so when I look at this conceptually, I can see that all of these things are just arguments to the C function. I don't have to sit down and think what's going on, go back, process it, make sense of it, nothing. Just look at it. Given the fact that they're all lined up, I know that these are all arguments to this one function, right? Whereas if I had not lined it up and Melissa had been here and uh, everything was running, then when somebody looks at the code or you yourself look at the code, you have to do some cognitive processing to just make sense of, oh, let me look at this. Oh, what's going on? Oh, these are all arguments to the C function, right? Sometimes these things get very complicated and it's extremely useful to just follow these guidelines and make things really easy, right? So you shouldn't, as it is, writing code and understanding code is complex. You don't want to add a layer, another layer of complexity by make it, making these simple things difficult, okay? So lining up function argument greatly increases the code readability that we have. Okay, and the good thing about RStudio is when you hit enter on RStudio, it automatically does this. Okay, so you actually have to go out of your way to uh, to undo what RStudio does automatically, right? Now, till now, you may not have paid attention to exactly what logic it's following, but this is what is going on there. Okay, take another example. So here I've got, this is a code that we've from, uh, one line of code from what we've seen before. Auto dollar cylinders is factor, auto dollar cylinders levels and labels. We saw this in the lesson on le on factors, okay? So once again, this looks reasonable, things lined up. It looks doesn't look too bad visually, not too disturbing. But the problem is, I've got factor auto dollar cylinders. I've got levels equal C, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In reality, these levels is an argument to the factor function. But that's not very clear if you just look at this. Okay, again, labels is an argument to the factor function. 
and again that is not clear and five cylinder is actually an argument to the C function which is inside of the factor function but the way the in which the code is written everything is lined up and you have to expend a lot of cognitive energy to figure out where everything goes okay so this is not a great idea for writing code you want to line up all the arguments for a particular function right so if you want to break down auto dollar cylinders here and put levels here then levels should line up there with auto dollar cylinders labels should also line up there because all of these things are arguments to the or, uh, factor function they're all arguments to the factor function they should all line up these are all arguments to the C function they should line up okay so this code uh, would cause the reader quite a lot of trouble okay so this is what we had earlier we say no don't do that and instead we recommend to do this okay so look at this factor auto dollar cylinders levels is this labels is this so it's very clear that all of these three are arguments to this function and then I've got C three cylinder four cylinder five cylinder six cylinder eight cylinder they're all lined up so all of them are arguments to the C function okay and right from this you can see that uh, C function is actually occurring inside the argument list of the factor function okay so we recommend that you follow this practice very carefully okay in fact this is probably the uh, the only code formatting guideline that we need to think about right when you're breaking code across multiple lines make sure that the arguments to a function line up again as I have pointed out our studio just does it automatically so just be aware of what it's doing and don't undo the good work that our studio does for you by default so again just to make things clear this was the code that we looked at in the previous uh, slide so notice that the arguments to the factor function have all lined up neatly the arguments to the C function have all lined up neatly so that's really all we have to pay attention to in terms of code formatting and our studio does things for us so just be aware of this and I think more importantly what you need to understand is that formatting code properly is very important for you as well as for others that's really the big lesson to take away from here because the actual act of formatting is done by our studio